one. Yeah, I'm going to talk about using high voltage systems, high voltage batteries, the larger systems. You know, many of you guys are used to using small three phase, maybe using 12, 24 kilowatt three phase systems, which are relatively small, maybe for larger houses. But let's focus really on the sort of more power, especially for commercial, then, you know, sort of that power doesn't really cut the mustard. Um, moreover, obviously with, the, with EV vehicles coming everywhere, um, then you're gonna need energy, you're gonna need power. Um, especially, you know, if, you, if you're a small business, you wanna put a number of EV chargers outside. I always use a set famous saying, you know, if you've got sort of 10 chargers, um, you've really got a small, small power supply. Um, some people say they use old oh, dynamic load balancing, a little, little bit like going to the pub. And you have 10 rugby players going to the pub and all wanting a pint of beer each. And the landlord said, well, I've got one pint. You can all have a little bit each. Well, what's the point? So I always use that thing to talk about it. But here, this is these are 50 kilowatt inverters, um, full hybrid inverters with MPPT. We've got an 80 kilowatt, which is very similar, which is now available. And the 80 kilowatt is, is a nice piece of kit. The beauty of these is they do run on high voltage and they're extremely simple to install. Um, this is sort of our standard battery pack. Um, these are a number of cells, and in fact, they're separate units, and they're all in series. Each, each one is around 50 volts, but in series, we get about 600 volts, maybe a little bit higher because of voltage. The top of the battery pack, we use what we call a BMU. This is a controller. So each of these batteries have the BMS, and the BMS talks to the BMU, which is at the top of the unit. So this BMU communicates with the battery pack. And I, I've actually got an example here of two, two BMUs here um, and two battery packs these are now talking to the inverters. Um, so one battery pack connects to one inverter, one battery connects to the other inverter. You can actually have very easily two battery packs with one inverter. So if you look at the bottom of the units here, you've got two battery inputs, so you've got two BMSs or two BMU controllers. So one inverter can actually control two stacks. You can then, if you wanted to, you can add additional stacks, but a very simple installation one inverter can have 120 kilowatt hour batteries. Two inverters here, we, we could actually have four stacks here with two inverters. These two inverters are wired in parallel. You, one of the most important things with this type of technology is we don't put the we don't have a common bus because the voltages are very high. And so what we do is we take the wire from one, one um, battery pack, it goes into the inverter, and from the other battery pack, it goes into the other inverter. It's a very simple thing. To actually communicate, um, it's just a canvas. It's one cable, it's a simple cable. Obviously the other parts are wired in parallel, so we wire the AC connections are in parallel, and it's very much like our standard inverter. You've got three out, three connections. You've got your, your grid connection, which is both an in and out, because it is, a, it is a hybrid inverter, so the grid connection is both in and out, exactly the same as the other ones. You've then got your generator, your auxiliary port, which is also an in and out. And finally, you've got your load, your UPS, which is an in and out. Now, if you want to use the things in bypass, you can wire your, 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 AC, your AC coming in, your AC, your AC going out, the whole unit, the whole device. This thing can handle a couple of hundred amps easily on bypass, it's a huge amount of power. The nice thing about also these inverters, they're not PCS inverters, PCS means power control system. So a PCS, often you see on large inverters, they use what they call PCS inverters. And PCS inverters have some, some advantages, but many disadvantages. The main disadvantages they are just a power control unit so a power control unit would actually um, need other components the beauty of a hybrid is we've got we've got the MPPTs here if you're looking you've got two you've actually got eight MP, um, eight connections so you've got your, you've got your, your MPPT array and you can see you've got eight MPPTs um, these units the smaller unit the 50 can take 65,000 watts of, of solar that actually can handle 65 volts. You can actually put a little bit more than that. You, put, you can actually put a larger array if you want to. They're on a series, 1,000 volts, there's no problem. So this, this will give you a number of, quite a number of strings and it makes the system really simple to install. If you chose not to use the MPPTs and you wanted to use them onto the microinverters or you want to use string inverters, of course you can AC couple it. You can AC couple it both on the grid side and the load side. Um, many times you might use the grid side. If you are going to AC couple on the grid side, you may have to consider the export because the, the string inverter, the grid tied inverter will export um, and therefore the grid tied inverter needs to have its own CT coil to prevent export. So that's as a complete system. And all what will happen is, is, uh, is the SunSync inverter will pick up that the unit is starting to export and it will tell the thing to charge its batteries up until the batteries are fully charged, um, which, is, which is a nice, and you can do the same thing on the load side, exactly the same thing. 
The other thing about these units is they are off grid and on grid. These are giving you a lot of power, both off and on grid. So you can, if you have off grid solutions where you need some decent energy, you can use it. If you have on grid solutions, but also it's a UPS. So like all the other stuff, if you have a power failure, um, load shedding, whatever, the unit can switch over and it can provide. You've got a huge reservoir of energy, massive, massive re reservoir of energy. So the batteries actually, the batteries here, the BMU, the batteries, the BMS communicates the BMU, the BMU communicates to the inverter. It's all plug and play. There's no point in me showing you the wiring because everything is plug, 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 plug. The nice thing about also is we're using the SunSync, so the SunSync operating system on the big stuff is exactly the same as the small stuff. If you're used to using the SunSync operating system, which is actually quite amazing, and it's very simple. If I touch the spa chart here, we'll see a flow chart, exactly what's going on. Um, so it's a very, very simple thing to use. It's really nice. So if you're going to be using, if you're using, if you're used to using a something, if you're using, say, little baby beast, I call the baby beast. Um, this is um, this is a 3.6 kilowatt inverter, as Mark Sample actually in the Hong Kong office. So this, this is just a demonstration thing that we use here, um, and it's got a seven kilowatt MPPT. We launched this a few years ago. I'm kind of chuckle to myself now. I'm seeing some of our competitors just sort of cottoning on, and people say, "What's well, the normal now?" So we, at least we've created the normal. So we've been doing this for years and years and years, but. It's nice and, and it has certain advantages. I know, I know nowadays because you can fast track in the United Kingdom, for example, on a seven kilowatt is a fast track. So the three point six is less common, but yet nevertheless, it's, it's a good thing. But when you, if you're used to using the Baby Beast software, the operating system, exactly the same, because we always, I always think it's important to have a nice screen, a nice user friendly operating system. You know, somebody said to me one time, he said, "Oh well." Our customers don't like LCD screens, they don't do it all on the app. Of course you can do the whole lot on the app. If you're competent enough, you can do everything I show you on your laptop, your app, or you can do a thousand miles away using the Sunset Connect. You don't even need to be a wireless system, you can do everything remotely. It will give you the full, full programming. But for now, if we're just talking simplicity, because if you're new, use, new to this, then if you buy the kit, you're going to buy the batteries, you know, the first thing you're going to have to do is assemble the racks. It's probably the most it takes the longest time. Um, we are introducing doors onto these racks because nowadays there's some the new standards, which I actually agree with. You know, one of the things they say you don't want to be able to unplug. It's coming towards the end of the year. You don't have the chance to unplug a battery while it's running, discharging, and create an arc. Yes, you can. Yeah, as an engineer, absolutely. So I'm seeing these new standards and certain points about it. So we're actually including doors, door units on these um, to give the protection because I think that's really important. Um, but if you if you you simply you assemble the racks, you put your units together. Take care of the high voltage. I also take care. Use rubber gloves. Take the safety. If you haven't done training, please make sure you do some basic training. Start con connecting your units together, um, but don't connect finally until you obviously do all your connections here. So leave that, don't put anything fine. If you wanna put the connections, you can. If not, just wait. And obviously you're connecting your inverters. You wire your inverters electrically using a suitable cable. Um, it's high current. So obviously you're, you, you're looking at 50 kilowatt per inverter, you've got 200 kilowatt inverter. So you obviously you need to make sure you've got suitable gauge AC cables to match. They will run in balance, it is three phase. But nevertheless, one thing you bear in mind is these are not pure three phase because they are a three phase, they give phase three rotation, but they will work asymmetrical. And that means you can take more power off a single phase than you can. Off the, so, so basically, if you've got 50 kilowatt, you may decide to draw while it's on grid, you might draw up to 25 kilowatt off one phase. You may draw 10 kilowatt off another phase, 50 on the other. It's asymmetrical load. And you can do that. That means your, your, your current, you have to look at your maximum current draw against your ratings of your, your fuses. So be careful. It is asymmetrical. It is an asymmetrical load. And watch your cable ratings. Um, obviously, in installation, uh, first thing I would do is come into a job, mount, screw the things on the wall, screw them on the wall, mount them on the wall, um, look at my, my cable runs, look at the device. It's obviously got protection boards here. Um, this thing is connected on three phase. Um, look at my CT coils. These can work on wireless CTs, or you can use hardwired CTs. Here we just put the hardwired, and you can see them on the, the phase colors here, the CTs. Two in parallel, so you only need one set of CTs. Um, off the master, one is a master and slave. Works exactly the same as everything else. Master, slave, master, slave. Um, so you mount them onto the wall. You're gonna connect your AC power, your AC power. You're gonna put your strings into it. Um, you're gonna put your, your CT coils, all good. 
Finally, at the end, you do you, you do your, you do your high voltage. Be very very careful your high voltage. Really careful. Do your high voltage. You're linking up, plugging in, switching on, and you're basically wired. It's not, you know, I'm not going to teach you guys how to wire. Um, it's fairly straightforward. You open the thing up and they're nice. Um, I always suggest to anybody, and you're wiring any inverter, and even if you're using a baby beast or using one of ours, ready to power up. Just don't go and run and say, oh yeah, but I'll switch all my AC on, I'll switch everything on and see what happens. Just slow down a little bit. Put the DC line on, switch your DC line. Take care, put your DC power on. Make sure the things boot up off your DC. So you've got two units here, I've got two batteries. Do your DC, do your settings, your parallel settings. So you go to the parallel setting, you set your master and slave and on your parallel setting, which you, which you must be able to do, you now set the two units up run it on the DC just run it on the battery make sure everything is running make sure you get no faults coming up before you go to the AC next thing on you, you're starting to look at the AC but before you switch your AC on look at the settings look at your maximum charge on your battery setting because if your fuse is limited and your battery charge setting is too high then you're thinking about normally the battery charge setting is setting current now when we were looking at low voltage, the current is you might be charging at 50 amps or whatever. But now we're looking at much higher voltages, so the currents are much lower. So you might be 50 amps, you're at 10 amps. So you've got to consider the current. So if you're charging the batteries at 10 amp at, six, at 600 volts, that's 6 kilowatt charging. And you're going to pull 6 kilowatt off the AC. So you've got to think what the AC can supply. If you're going to charge 20 amp, so you've got to think about what your charge current is. So just start it quite low. So my suggestion is before you put your AC, because you don't want to switch your AC and suddenly boom, the breakers trip. Start it quite low, um, and it's much much better. Then once you're stable, once your batteries are running, it's running stable on your batteries. I probably suggest you introduce the solar, the PV array next. Put your PV on, switch your PV switches on onto the system. Get these get these running onto the system and allow these, these to go into the input. You put your, two, your PVs on one or two, switch your PVs on. Let your PV array running. Now your system is running, it's normal, it's functioning. Finally, after you maybe wait half an hour, everything is stable, you know there's no problems, sun is shining, PVs, batteries are charging off the PV, you've done all your settings, you've, been, you've set your grid code compliance settings. Make sure you're in the right country, the right grid code compliance, uh, whichever country you're in. So you go through your grid code compliance settings, all that is done. Finally, 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 introduce your AC, your main AC, switch that on. Because do that at the very end. Once you switch that on, then you know you're up and running. It is actually quite simple, it's quite easy to run. But go slowly, slowly and check your settings. Check, check, check your settings. Especially don't do overcharge on your batteries or whatever before you, when you, before you switch your AC. Once you switch your AC on, you will then get your, obviously you're going to get your, your AC light, your normal light, and you know everything is running. You set, you set all other settings are exactly the same as any other inverters. It's really nice to use. The nice thing about this is it does get you into pretty high end commercial systems fairly easily. Of course, you put your data logger on and you're going to connect to your SunSync Connect app, um, which is, you know, and, and very soon we, we've, got, we've got an AI version, we've got some absolutely amazing stuff coming on. Um, you know, if you're following SunSync, you know, we, we have some really, really clever stuff. So keep following us. If you want more training, we, we, we're doing training in the various locations, in South Africa, in, in Europe, and in, in the United Kingdom. But this is a nice system. But the biggest thing I say is take care. Don't, don't be complacent, be very careful, especially when you're doing your wiring. You know, one, one thing is, you know, think about, don't rush. You know, you, you, you put your power in here, the final ones from the BMU out to the other. Be careful you don't end up with, you know, I saw one guy lift, put that wire onto here, you, got, you, you, end up with a, you end up with a dead short. You could have been, just be careful. Slowly, slowly, you know, before you make the final connections, check it, check it, check it. Even if you know everything about it, just sometimes think about it because it's so easy to make a mistake. This stuff you've got to be so careful of. You don't want to make a mistake. But once it's installed and once it's wired, these will give you a lot of a long, long time. These things will provide power a lot. You know, especially if you've got businesses where you you've got a number, you need EV charging because that's going to be the big thing everywhere. You need EV charging um, or UPS. One thing you can consider is you know these things work as a UPS, <clears throat> so it's it, it, they have a changeover. So basically, the the, the, the AC is coming in, 
you've got the grid side going out. So if the, if the AC is there, it's not using the inverter, it will connect it straight. If the AC goes, disappears, it will flick over to the battery. There is a very, very short period. Now if I connect on here, I think these things are running. We, we have light. Yeah, many hands make light <laughs> work. Um, we have light. So these inverters are bypassing. And in fact, what we've got here, we're connecting here for load of the inverter. And it's connecting to the, the, these, these array light bulbs. We're on AC. So if I disconnect my AC, you'll see what happens. If I switch my AC, if I trip this switch, it gone. Trips over. Now we're running on, we're running on the UPS on the battery. There is a changeover. It's very fast. It's about 20 milliseconds. Um, you hardly notice it. I could sit slightly on an incandescent lamp. In most applications, you hardly notice it. I know in very, very, very rare conditions, um, some equipment is extremely sensitive and it may cause a problem. If that is the case, I'll switch the power back on again and it will switch. It takes a while. So when I switch it back on again, it doesn't switch over instantly. Um, the reason why it doesn't switch over instantly is because the inverter is running through, it's running, it's a three phase, you've got the, it's following the phase rotation, and what happens now is the inverter has to lock back into the grid. So the inverter has to move, and it has to start aligning the frequency, and so the frequency aligns up, so the frequency has to be perfectly aligned. Only when the frequency is perfectly aligned, then the switch can take, switch over. Typically, can take about a minute for the alignment. It depends on how stable your grid is. If your grid is fluctuating a lot, then it could take a long time for it to switch onto AC. If your grid is extremely stable, it's hardly moving at all, then it can be much quicker. And it is to do with the alignment of the frequency and the volts. Everything has to align. And at some point, you'll see, you'll hear a click, and this thing will click back over. But in very rare conditions, it may cause a problem. And so, one of the things that you could consider is you can DC couple the inverter. So if you've got a DC couple, so you can have one inverter charging the battery, one inverter discharging the battery, and you can use an array. A little bit more complicated wiring, at that point you would need to use a common bus. It's a bit different, yeah, here they click. There we go, we clicked, it's that fast. In fact, I didn't even see it this time, so it's really fast. And in fact, you see the AC lights, if you come and, come and have a come and zoom in. And we'll see the AC lights is lit up. And they click on here, you can see what's going on. It's really nice, we've got a normal light. So no alarm lights, everything's functioning perfectly. So it is nice. Um, you know, all I can say is the kit we've got with the operating system, with the Sunset Connect, the whole thing works really, really well. Well, it's well tried and tested. There's, there's a massive, massive amount of systems out there. Um, and if you're unsure, you know, contact any of the dealers or contact any of the support services, whatever. But this is a good product. It really is, you know, as the future, you know, the bigger stuff is the future and it's all about energy everywhere's about energy and and this stuff is so easy to wire you know you can put them if you want to build your own you know we build it what we call indicators we have power hubs but if you want to build your own you can buy these things you know you know just these are mounted a bit too close so, so in fact in reality you wouldn't be this close you'd be about um about a meter apart the only reason we're this close is because this is just a demonstration site and it's just really for for, for teaching um but, if I, but normally I, it would be further apart you need look at your ventilation, look at your heat, your batteries again, you know, the batteries do create some heat. They're relatively low heat. In fact, these things are pretty cold at the moment, but they can generate heat, especially when they're charging, and um, they can generate some heat. And so you need to you need to consider that. But if you put them in a well ventilated area, I think in a lot of regulations now in, in many countries, these need to be put outside of a main living area maybe into a small metal shed or a container. And I, I'd probably put a ventilation or a little HVAC or a, a, an air conditioning unit inside it. Um, but, this, but installing this kit is really easy. It's really nice. You know, and if you've never done it before, teach yourself, go and, get, go and buy one of the little beasts, teach you, understand the software, understand the operating system, understand how the SunSync and how the amazing features of the SunSync Connect is and how, why, why it's so good. And then once you're used to using the Sunset Connect app, then you can move onto this and you've got the familiarity. Anyway, thanks for following the video. Hope it's useful. I'm going to do loads more videos. I've got some interesting stuff coming in the next week or so. Thanks for following us.